Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, and I host the Valder Beebe Show on FM radio and internet television. I am famously known for that celebrity interview, which I conduct by cell phone, in studio, or satellite media tours. Go to ValderBeebeShow.com, YouTube.com slash Show, or our partnership network with Business in the Black, which is BlackSuccessAcademy.com, and click on the Valder BB Show channel. I'll see you there. Hello, Hi. Valder. Hi, Valder. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, gentlemen. I'd like to welcome Dr. Paul Underwood and Dr. Wayne Batchelor to talk about closing the health care gap. You know, they say this is the first of this study that provides insight into women and minorities with heart disease. Welcome, doctors. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks Thank for you. having us. If I could start with you, Dr. Paul Underwood, why did you do the study? Well, I'm here with Boston Scientific and in particular, our health equity initiative called Close the Gap. We saw that the people who are at most risk for having poor outcomes with cardiovascular disease are the ones that are least studied in clinical trials. We know that it's very important for clinicians to have clinical data so that they can build the guidelines that they use to treat patients with evidence-based medicine. And so we're very pleased that we're able to collect data in a large population of, of women and minorities that we can actually make statistically sound, scientifically valid statements regarding what they can do to, uh, to promote their health. Dr. Bachelor, let me ask you, the impact of gender, race, and ethnicity on, 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 as shown in this study, what is it going to bring forth? Something new or just the same old, same old? Well, I think it, should, it provides significant insight into this issue. Let me start by just describing the study briefly. The Platinum Diversity Study was a study that we did across 52 centers in the United States where we collected detailed information on women and, and minorities undergoing a coronary stent procedure. Uh, what we did is that one year we, ta we uh, tallied all the data and compared outcomes in women and minorities relative to volumes of data that we already have on white men undergoing the same procedure. What we noted was that there was an increased risk in women and minorities relative to white men. And the reason for that is we can discuss in further detail, but what we noted was in particular female minorities were at the highest risk and they had a fourfold increase in the likelihood of having a heart attack within a year after presenting for their stent procedure. So we felt that this was really important. It was a stark finding, of, I think, a, a higher risk than we would have anticipated. But it was a study that has been not really uh, done in the past to this degree with these kinds of numbers of patients. We had over 1,500 patients enrolled, which was a, a robust sample size. Dr. Underwood, I think the study is a great idea, and I know people have to participate in clinical trials in order to find the answers. But you know, within the group that you're talking about, specifically minorities, there's a suspicion about being a, a guinea pig in a study that goes way back to John Hopkins and other studies. How do you overcome that? Well, certainly education, again, is very important. And it's important for people to realize that without information on how their particular group fares, then we cannot put that information into the guidelines. And so we've seen that most groups are interested in improving health care. And the way to improve health care is by participating in clinical studies. We think that you can find out more information on heart disease by visiting our website at yourhearthealth.com. And with this, you can discuss this with your physician, your doctor. Hopefully, your doctor will then um, introduce you to other clinical trials and to develop a care plan for you that can use these data to reduce your risk. Mr. Bachelor, I know you're not a physician, but can you give, leave us with some uh, um, things that people can do to be more proactive in their heart health care? Anyone can give me that? 
Well, uh, Valder, I actually am a physician. I'm an interventional cardiologist. I'm and I, sorry. No, that, that's fine. That's no problem. So hopefully I can shine some light on that. Um, so, some personal responsibilities. Number one, um, understand what your risk is. As, as Dr. Underwood stated, there are ways in which you can find out what your risk is, whether you go to yourhearthealth.com or another website to get that. Talk to your physician about your inherent risk of heart disease, and then look at your modifiable risk factors, things like smoking, diet, exercise, weight, um, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and others, your family history. So these are things that are really important, but also uh, as, a, as, as, as a society, we're only as good as the information that we collect. So I would really encourage women and minorities when asked to participate in, the, in a clinical study of some sort, really look at it carefully because it, although it might not directly help you, it will definitely help future, um, future women and minorities who have heart disease so that we can have the data that we need to, to treat patients optimally. Thank you, and thank you for that prescription of good health. Dr. Underwood, I'll wrap up with you. Um, those who do want to participate, once again, would you give us a way to participate? Certainly. So what most people can do is to go to <coughs> clinicaltrials.gov, and there's a list of clinical trials that are available for people to participate in. If people want to know more information concerning their heart health, then they should go to yourhearthealth.com and they can come up with their risk, factor, their risk factor profile that they can share with their physicians and family. Dr. Unwood and Dr. Batchelor, I want to thank you so very much. I know this interview and this conversation has made a difference, so thank you for being my guest on the Valder BB Show here on KKBI FM Radio. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having us, Valder. Thanks, Valder.